Welcome to another episode of the Get Back Coach, <laughs> presented by Apollo Media. Jay, did you try it? Did we try and harmonize? I tried to harmonize. Well, that, <laughs> that was not the Beatles. That was not Beatles like. Yeah, that we're uh, really we're not very musically gifted. No, I don't think. No, not not great. <laughs> um, uh, wild weekend in college football. Lo- uh, great games everywhere. Um, the beginning of the great games, because, uh, yeah, we're, we're going to skip over Army just trouncing Temple on Thursday night. Um, Friday night, though, uh, two spectacular games, and we're going to start off with some controversy. Miami beats Virginia Tech 38-34. Um, Jay, a couple things that I saw here. Hurricanes getting completely gashed on defense. Uh, I don't think this is a Virginia Tech offense that is really great. Um, now, uh, running back, uh, Basin Tootin, 141 yards on the ground. Um, you know, it's the Hokies. I feel like they, they play tough. Like this is a tough football team again, reflective of Brent Pry. However, they just cannot seem to get it done. This is, they are one in 10, or I should say Brent Pry is one in 10 in one score games as the head coach of Virginia Tech. You have to think the luck is going to eventually bounce their way. It did not the other night. Um, Very, uh, a lot of controversy. So I'm going to set the stage here for everybody else. Uh, Miami scores. Virginia Tech is controlling this football game. Miami scores to go ahead. Everyone thinks, okay, Virginia Tech's done. They're not built to have uh, a one-minute offense. Comes down. Uh, Brent Pry, d- he avoids a disastrous uh, clock management series. Throw the ball up in the end zone. It- it's very hard to tell if he caught it or not. However, on the field, it was a touchdown. They go back to review it. You can't really see the ball. And everyone's just kind of like, well, it was a touchdown on the field. There's nothing inconclusive to overturn this. And they come back and they they overturn the call. And Jay, before I kick it to you, I think people forget that there was a the play before that. Virginia Tech got a receiver behind somebody, and granted, he caught the ball out of bounds, but made a spectacular grab that didn't count. Virginia Tech almost caught Miami twice of yeah. receivers um, high pointing the ball and, and not, or, or I should say, my Miami defensive backs not high pointing the ball, not rebound, like not doing that rebound technique that you do. Um, Miami avoids a absolute disaster at home against Virginia Tech. Yeah, and and this kind of goes back to the game management uh, conversation that we've – I feel like we've had about Mario Cristobal before is just like the the scenarios where you can wrap up a game, it just seems like he just really struggles with those. Uh, And Miami kind of got lucky with this one. I say kind of. They definitely got lucky with this one Mm -hmm. Uh, because like you said, I mean, really beaten twice almost. but again, I don't know how they overturn it, considering how hard it was to see. Like, maybe no, I don't know. That's just tough. Uh, I will say Miami very lucky that they didn't play uh, at Lane Stadium for this one, because I yeah. feel like that could have been a, <clears throat> a heck of an environment. And and I think the the thing that everyone is trying to say here is, was it a catch? We don't know. However, it, it, the thing is, Jay, it, it probably wasn't. Yeah, but you called it a touchdown on the field and there is nothing in that replay that shows you that it was incomplete. You, yeah. you got nothing else out of it. So I, I don't understand how they do that. Um, I, I will make a comment though about Miami um, cam ward, um, not his best game, but still super dangerous. I think he is ca- he's really carrying that Miami offense with his legs. Um, it, anytime Virginia Tech got pressure, uh, Cam Ward would just scoot for about you know 10, 12 yards. And I think that puts uh, a lot of ideas in a lot of defensive coordinators' minds in, a- in the ACC just being like, hey, we don't got to send a whole bunch of pressure. We just got to make sure we keep him confined 
yeah. you know, in that pocket and make sure we have a linebacker spying. But Miami really fortunate. Uh, Brent Pry with a little bit of a uh, game management blunder. Mario Cristobal, guys aren't ready on defense. Um, I don't want to write off the ACC quite yet, but uh, – Miami and the ACC have to be thanking their lucky stars that Miami is still undefeated after Thursday. Yeah, hundred percent. Friday. Friday. I mean, the good news for the ACC is they still get automatic berths. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they'll they'll have at least one team in no matter what. But yeah, have to be uh, have to be very lucky. So really quick before we move on, uh, uh, Brent Pry, uh, love Brent Pry. I've to say it all the all the time on this podcast. Very much a Brent Pry guy. However, you have 19 guys returning um, from last year's team. They're, I believe they're losing a lot, so next year probably isn't going to look great. Do you think that, let's just say Virginia Tech ends the year 6-6, six and six, or maybe it maybe even misses a bowl, do you just fire him here and just start over because he might be looking like a lame duck coach in year three? What do you think you'd do there? Yeah, I mean, it's tough, right? Like, I, I think you do have to see, because, like, there's still a lot of football left to be played this year. Mm-hmm. And if Virginia Tech does well in the back half of the season, you know, maybe there's something to build off of. Uh, but I think if this thing goes south, which it can definitely do, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if you to see Virginia Tech mm-hmm. start over. Yeah, and like I said, they're, what, two and three? So it's not the end of the world. Uh, again, the ACC is kind of wide open as far as that middle tier goes. And I... I do think I can see Brent Pry getting those guys up. Um, culture guy, again, love Brent Pry. I, I I really hope he turns it around in Blacksburg. Uh, and then we switch over, Jay, like we used to do in the late 90s with Raw and Nitro. We're just switching back and forth between these, <laughs> between two things. Another wrestling deep cut there for the people listening. Um, Rutgers and Washington. Washington, three missed kicks. SHI Stadium looked awesome. Blackout. And Rutgers beats the defending national champion runner, runners up, the Washington Huskies, 21 to 18. Jay, is Greg Schiano the only man that can solve the Rutgers puzzle? I think so. Uh I don't I don't know how. Uh, anyone else can have success there other than Shiano and, and they're four now now undefeated mm-hmm. on the season uh, some big wins they have the win over Virginia Tech which was a great uh, great win for Rutgers now they have a win over Washington and uh, I mean something about Shiano in, in New Jersey just makes Piscataway a tough place to play mm-hmm. uh, they're always a really physical team not a team that you want to play right like they just kind of gritty tough. nasty tough, tough. Uh, not not a fun matchup. It's kind of like playing the service academy. It's obviously yep. a little bit different because you're not running the the triple, but uh, it's just always a tough team to play. And it's kind of like walking into a back alley. Uh, you're you're gonna get kind of stabbed a couple times, but mm-hmm. you know you're you're gonna know you were in a fight. Uh, it's it's a different style of football than we we see a lot of elsewhere. Monongahai is a lot of fun to watch. Right at running Manonga, back, yeah, man. Manongai, uh, the fu- as our friend Jeffrey says, the fun guy, Manongai. Yeah, yes. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, great start for Rutgers. Uh, the Big Ten's a little bit interesting this year. There's some teams that are maybe surprises. That uh, I think there's another one we're going to get to a little bit later. But uh, yeah, I mean, a great performance for Rutgers and, a, and another great win to add to their uh, their record so far. Is are we talking about? Is, are we five and zero Rutgers right now? I think they're four now. I think they've four already had a bye week. Okay, I could be wrong on still, that. Still, still undefeated. We are talking about undefeated Rutgers right now in October. In October, uh, yeah, I mean, you gotta love it. Um, you know, it's you know, as a Penn State fan, I, I don't I don't really like to root for Rutgers just because of recruiting grounds and New Jersey because New Jersey is a hotbed for football players. But you, you got to take your head off to Rutgers. They are. I mean, really exceeding expectations. And if you're a Rutgers fan, you just got to enjoy the ride. Don't get too caught up in how many wins and losses. Just, man, enjoy it. Enjoy every single game. And I I think they definitely are. Um, We're going to move on to Saturday. And, Jay, you have the privilege of kicking us off 
with Texas A&M and Arkansas. Texas A&M beats the Razorbacks 21-17. For the last time in Jerry World, praise be. I mean, this game's always chaotic, always just kind of a stupid game. Uh, Arkansas comes out, scores really quickly. Uh, Texas A&M answers with a long ball to Noah Thomas really quickly. And then uh, it was it was a pretty much a defensive battle uh, for the rest of the game. There's a couple more touchdowns, but we go into the half tied 14-14. Arkansas gets a field goal to make it 17-14. Uh, and then A&M marches down the field, scores 21-17. Uh, uh, and that, that was the final score in this one. Uh, defense really stepped up there in the back half of the game. Nick Scorton was unbelievable. Uh, he gets a strip sack to kind of seal this deal. Uh, Le'Veon Moss ran the ball really well in the fourth quarter. I mean, he was a big part of why AM had so much success. Uh, Jaquin and Jackson was limited on the ground by the AM defense. Uh, I mean, the rushing defense, after maybe a little bit of a shaky start against Notre Dame, has really come on. For, for Texas A&M, and they're going to be a force to be reckoned with as the season goes on. Uh, you know, Taylor Green got pressured a lot and uh, ended up with some turnovers. Uh, you know, it's <clears> – <throat> I don't know how much you can read into this one, but A&M's 2-0 in the SEC now. Uh, it's a good start for, for the Aggies uh, after the disappointing loss to Notre Dame. So I think you have a lot of stuff to build off of. This is not going to be a team that blows people out. Like, it's just not with what their offense is. Uh, I think they're going to rely on the run and then rely on their defense, and, and that's just going to be the identity, and that's okay. It's, uh, you know, there will be some challenges later in the in the season uh, as far as teams that, you know, maybe are a little bit better. But I thought Arkansas' defense looked pretty good last week against Auburn. Again, Auburn has their own struggles, but uh, it's it's a good one for the Aggies to notch. And, you know, helps get them one one game closer to bowl eligibility. Yeah, and and Jay, I think you guys were expecting a bit of a rebuild here. So, you know, just again, I'm not comparing you guys to Rutgers by any stretch of the imaginary. But uh, you know, but like, take a game at a time. You're in a rebuild. Don't get too caught up in you know. Well, this is our record. This is our record. Is the team improving every week? And I think they are. Right. Yeah. And and it's it's been interesting too with like Marcel Reed at quarterback, right? Like you you have Connor Wigman still dealing with the AC joint, uh, a freshman quarterback uh, making starts. Obviously a threat with his legs, fun to watch. Scramble. Uh, the passing game is still struggling a little bit. Some issues with with Marcel Reed hitting guys downfield, but it was fun to see Noah Thomas explode. Uh, shades of Mike Evans, honestly, he's a six six wide receiver. Uh, went for that That's 58 crazy. yard touchdown. I mean. You know, and we haven't seen him flash quite as much as we've expected from him. Uh, but it was good to see that. I think there's still times where Marcel's kind of missing some open guys downfield, missing some reads. Uh, but again, freshman quarterback, it's, it's kind of to be expected. No, exactly. And, you know, again, I just said don't get caught up in wins and losses. But like A&M's got some games where, you know, coming up where they should win, you know. And with four, four and one right now, um, you know, listen, Jay, there, I think every game here, every game here is winnable in front of them, you know? And yes, they're going to be probably heavy dogs at the end of the year, but I, I think anything can happen in Kyle field under the lights in a very emotional contest to say the least. So, um, big win for your Aggies and a big matchup coming up. Yeah, they get Mizzou next, so that'll be uh, something that we talk about, I think, a little bit later. Yep. Uh, but, yeah, I mean, it's it's a big win, and anytime you can notch a conference win, you got to take it. So yep. uh, this game always is chaotic. This one, it was close. It wasn't quite as chaotic. There weren't quite the moments that were just kind of like, I can't believe that just happened. Uh, but it was still a very tight, very close game that we've come to expect in Jerry World. Uh, stick it in the SEC for the next one. Uh, Kentucky with the upset of Ole Miss. Uh, yes, really, really fun matchup here. Uh, I did have Kentucky plus 15 and a half. Apparently I should have taken a money line. Uh, but yeah, it was a big win for Mark Stoops squad. Uh, especially after they played Georgia close, I think they just kind of wanted this one and, and, Mm -hmm. you know, it looked like Ole Miss was going to get off to a hot start. They got uh, a good quick score, but Kentucky's defense just able to kind of muck it up. And I, I do love the last Kentucky touchdown scored there where, 
they fumble going towards the end zone and it just happens to bounce into a Kentucky guy's hands right. uh, for the touchdown. Uh, but yeah, it was a, uh, it was a fun game. Yeah. Um, this is like you said, classic Kentucky muck it up, play good defense, run the football, timely stops. And you know, when you shorten games like this, Jay, you know, and Ole Miss, if they have some miscommunication here or there, um, maybe they're a little sloppy on offense. You shorten this game down. Now they have less opportunities to score. And now you're giving Kentucky, who's going to take control of the clock and play that style. You know, um, it, it just gives you a chance. And that's what Kentucky does. And I, I don't know, Mark Stoops, just when you think it's like, oh, man, like, is he still the right guy for Kentucky? He pulls off something like this. Um, just um, incredible job. Uh, you think Kentucky fans are going to get sick of him? I, we talk about this all the time. Yeah, I mean, look. The nature, I, of, nature of the beast? It's just it's Kentucky football, right? I like, I, I just think he's – provided so much stability there in Lexington. Uh, they're never going to be elite, mm -hmm. uh, but they, you know, if they get a quarterback one year, who's, who's really solid, uh, they can catch some teams off guard for sure. And they're always going to be solid defensively. Uh, so you kind of know what you get there. Uh, again, I've, I've compared them to kind of an Iowa light uh, mm -hmm. for the sec. And I don't think that's a bad thing for Kentucky. So uh Big win for him there, and and they'll try to build some momentum off of it. Hey, man, they're three and two. Yeah. Three and two, not bad, not bad. If you're Kentucky, and obviously the loss to South Carolina hurts. Yes, but losing to Georgia by one point, no shame in that. No, nothing. And then and then you get one back. You you lose to South Carolina a game. You feel like you probably should have had, or at least played a lot better. And then you beat Ole Miss, who's more talented than you. It's yeah. like you, you give take it the way and give it. Yep. Um, now we're going to move to the West Coast, Jay. Arizona upsets Utah 23-10. to 10. Um, Cam Rising not being able to play is killing Utah's offense. Yeah. Every time they play a defense that has a pulse um, or an offense that can kind of keep, a, keep it away from them a little bit, and uh, it just seems like they, they can't come back. And, and – I don't want to rip on Isaiah Wilson. Who is he? Zach Wilson's brother. I think so. I think they are related, right? That would yeah. make sense. Be what the BYU Utah connection there. Um, it's no offense to Isaiah Wilson, um, but it's just Cam Rising is just such a he's such a entity. I think for Utah football. I mean, Jay, we're talking about over a year. Yeah. Later. Yeah, and and and, and Cam Rising still is not right from that injury in the Rose Bowl, um, and and don't forget Utah's also missing Jaquin and Jackson, who transferred to to Arkansas. Oh wow, yeah, it, exactly. So I don't know. Utah's still going to be Utah again, uh, kind of like Kentucky. They're they're going to uh, play complimentary football. Um, they're not going to wow you right now on offense, just because you know no Cam Rising, and they're going to play solid fundamental defense um the the offense just has to get it going especially in the past game right now and i think yeah. that is very much hindering them um but hey arizona still keeping it together yep uh tetaro mcmillan and, and noah fafita are as fun a combination of quarterback and wide receiver as you have in the country mm -hmm. uh, their offense can still give a lot of people problems uh, so they'll be one to keep an eye on. I, I know they had the bad loss to Kansas State, wasn't a close game, but uh, they're they're still a dangerous team. Going to be fun to watch them for the the remainder of the season in the Big Twelve. Absolutely, uh, we're going to stay in the Big Twelve right now. Kansas State beats uh, the Bricks <laughs> off of Oklahoma State, uh, forty two twenty. Mike Gundy giveth, and Mike Gundy taketh away. Um, he always has games like this. Yeah, there are always these games like where. It's like what did, what did they do? Yeah, and, and and you know what's crazy? Like I, I was talking to some of my friends. You know, we're we're starting to put together like large parlays. Like everybody has a leg, and just you know, everyone sees like, hey, or, let's see if we can hit something big. And this, I had a friend who was big on OK State, and I'm like, I would not do that. 
It's like Kansas State just got killed last week. I said they're going to come out very motivated, and I don't know. I, I just feel like this was a perfect letdown stop, spot for Oklahoma State, and it ended up being it. Um, yeah, and, and no beefy five-layer curse for Kansas State. No. Because they uh, fulfilled the promise there. They <laughs> allegedly fulfilled the promise. Don't don't look that up. Yes. Um, Jay, do you think okay, – Ollie Gordon, great running back. Do you think their rushing attack is a little disappointing? I can't help but wonder like, if yeah. the offseason – may have a little something to do with that right like a distraction from that yeah. uh but yeah it's been very disappointing because ollie gordon was i think one of the most talked about backs heading into this year yeah uh and he just really hasn't ever taken over a game like he did at points during the season last year uh yeah i, I mean poor o line play could be it, the issue I know. is it scheme is it oh i buy it out, like poor offensive line play I don't know. I can't put well, my like, finger on the it. Arkansas and I don't watch game, enough. The Arkansas game makes sense because, like, Arkansas jumped out to a big lead in that one. Right. So Oklahoma State kind of had to play from behind. Right. Uh, but Utah shut them down, and and now Kansas State and and to be fair, Kansas State and Utah both similar teams in that they're usually pretty good defensively against the run. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I think you still expect more out of Ollie Gordon in this squad, uh, rushing the ball. So. Uh, definitely, definitely some disappointment uh, in in Stillwater at the moment. Mm -hmm. No, definitely. And hey, Kansas State, huge bounce back after BYU. By the way, BYU's at the head of the table in the Big Twelve. <laughs> Who would have thought? Who would have thought? Not me. Uh, not not us. Not us. Totally wrong. Um, now we're going to a a, J, a, a ACC adjacent yeah. game. Uh, Notre Dame gets a ranked win over Louisville, uh, 31-24. Um, listen, Louisville jumps out to a 7-0 lead, and then it was pretty much all Notre Dame for the rest of the game. Here's the thing, Jay. I know it says 31-24. Watching this one back, I didn't feel like – I think once Notre Dame took a 14-7 lead, I don't think I felt any worry that Notre Dame was going to pull this game off. Um, controlled the game. Louisville, a little bit of scare towards the end, but uh, the the Irish were pretty much uh, in control of this one from pretty much since after the first drive. Yeah, I mean, Notre Dame with 21 points in the first quarter uh, and then just kind of coasted from there. Uh, Louisville tries to make a game of, out of it to their credit. I just think, uh, you know, Notre Dame – just tends to do well in these games, right? Whether it's a ranked opponent. Yeah. They, they seem like they just get up for these types of games. And, you know, uh, Riley Leonard had one of his better performances throwing the ball. I don't think he's been as good through the air this year, uh, but obviously still very much a threat running the ball. So uh, going to be interesting to see kind of how Notre Dame goes for the rest of it because this felt like the most dangerous opponent left on their schedule. Maybe USC uh, at the end of the season. I think you can make an argument for Navy too. Uh, but this Louisville team was was definitely a big one that they had left on their schedule, and, and to see them go out there and get the win that they needed uh, is going to be big for the Irish. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, now we go to the game that I was in attendance for. Uh, Penn State beats Illinois 21-7 with the crowd having white out. <laughs> Dramatic pause. Energy. It's white out energy. Again, they cannot have an official whiteout or the Winnipeg Jets and whatever. the. I was going to ask how close it was to an actual whiteout. OJ, everybody got the memo. Yeah. Everybody. I was nervous because I, I, I said to my brother, because obviously we were going to wear white, and I said, I said, this is like an internet thing. This is a fan thing. I wonder how many people are actually going to do this. Because, Jay, I'm going to be honest, a lot of olds – in the Penn state football community that aren't necessarily on the internet. However, now that I'm thinking about this, those old people are definitely all on the internet. They are oh, all yeah. over. They're all over Facebook, all um, over Facebook. <laughs> yeah. So everybody got the memo. Um, and I, I will say a uh, pretty nice crowd, pretty nice. Uh, a couple videos resurfaced um, decibels hitting uh, 112 around us and then i think people said in the student section to hit 120 so decibels so you know decently loud game 
for um, someone not higher profile. No offense to Illinois. But listen, Jay, this game right here, Illinois puts together one of the best drives I have ever seen to go up 7 nothing. Jay. Mm. Illinois, Altmeyer, everything clicking right down the field. And I'm like, whoa, here we go. Yeah. Long game, though. Penn State responds. And then it's, hey, it's 7-7 going into halftime. Um, Penn State misses a field goal. Illinois misses a field goal. Um, how about this, though? Coming out of halftime, and there are some questions about Tom Allen as as defensive coordinator um, over the last couple weeks um, in the Penn State fan base. And, Jay, after Illinois, so Illinois gets down to the two-yard line. Penn State, big stop, bad snap, uh, forced him to kick a field goal, doesn't get the field goal. Illinois had 49 yards the rest of the game. Yeah. 49 yards. So you're talking about, um, you know, 49 yards for pretty much the entire second half. Um, Penn State's defense shut them down. Again, this is kind of like the Notre Dame game. Illinois was in it, but once Penn State came down and scored um, to start the second half, it was kind of like, okay, we feel a little bit better here. Um, listen, I think Illinois is a really tough team. I think they are, their secondary is great. Uh, their offense has a good receiver duo. Um, I think Altmeyer is good and can be great, but I think there's also times where he just loses his mind and starts running aimlessly. Yeah. Um, Penn State fans, because I know Penn State fans listen to this. Um, this is this is the only part you should be worried here. Not about nothing about the offense. Nothing. Well, one thing about the defense we'll get to in a second. Um, we there is a giant kicker problem. Uh, Xander Sahajak has a great leg, and he Jay, he's missing field goals by like, like he's just missing them. Yeah, it, it was this thing. It was the story last. It's not year. like it's huge shanks. No, and it's like it's a story in West Virginia game last year, West Virginia game this year. Now the Illinois game he missed too. Penn State I think went for it on fourth down on like the twenty five fourth and three because. I don't know if they trusted him. And and this is what we need to do. And I saw a Penn State fan post this, so I don't want to take credit for it. Get him in a room with Sam Ficken, okay? And, and Jay, I, 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 you probably don't know this, but the Penn State fans know what I'm talking about. Sam Ficken had the biggest yips I've ever seen as a kicker, blew a game against Virginia in 2012, okay, um, was missing kicks, was missing extra points, and then something clicked. Don't know what. But something clicked, and then he ended up kicking for the New York Jets. Okay, yeah. so get him in a room with him. I don't know. Have him call him like there, because Penn State is going to need a kicker at some point, and it, it's going to cost Penn State a game. I don't know when, and I hope it's not the case. But Xander's got to get it figured out, and and he's a big time recruit, and I oh I I think he's a great kid. I just you got to figure it out. I think it's mental. But yeah. I, but and the other thing, Jay, bad penalties on defense. Yeah, you, you get the one taken back from the the intercept return for the touchdown. However, that kind of helps Penn State because they scored a touchdown and took four minutes off the clock. Um, but uh, dumb offsides with Abdul Carter and Deny Dennis Sutton. Um, you know, it, it's you, you got to clean up. You got to clean up the penalties. You got to because that is going to hurt against the USC's and the Ohio State's of the world. Yeah. Um, last thing, Al Aller didn't have to be the guy. I know everyone's worried about, oh, well, Aller didn't play that great. He didn't have to. You put up 245 yards of running, of rushing. Yeah. Allen and Singleton are as fun to watch as any running it, back. It's great. The they're two, and, and Jay, they're uh, not to go to the hard strings or too much, but like apparently they're roommates. They're like always complimenting each other. They're always like, it's my brother. And I think that's refreshing because I think it could have very easily been like, well, he's getting more touches than me or he's getting this. He Penn State does a great job of using them in the right situations. Yeah. And Singleton had 94 yards. Allen had 103. Pretty good day for both guys. Yep. Um, so – uh, I'll, listen, I'll take this win. I think Penn State covers if the, the kicking situation is 
is taken care of. Um, I'm, I'm not going to um, sulk after a 14 point victory of a, a top 25 opponent and good on the AP for keeping Illinois ranked. Yeah. By the way, Illinois good deserves to still be ranked. Yeah. So I don't know. That's my take. Uh, that's my take from the Penn state game. If you, if you, if you wanted to add, I know I talked way too much. <laughs> no, I mean, again, Singleton and Allen, just a lot of fun to watch the defense uh, other than the penalties, like you mentioned, just so good for Penn state. Uh, really stepped up and and the thing is like I think we've seen this year that Penn State can dip into the vertical passing game when they need to mm -hmm. uh, they just don't have to right now and and when you have a running back duo as good as Allen and Singleton there's no reason to press it because I mean it's the old saying about forward passes right three things can happen when you throw the ball and two of them are bad yeah so no exactly uh no no reason to get up in arms about Aller uh still a very solid quarterback still uh, a very good system change that Penn yeah. State has made this year. And a lot again. of fun to watch this offense, uh, but but yeah, I don't have too much to add other than that. It's it's fun to watch, and sometimes, man, it's it, dude. You know, fans are crazy. Yeah, because like now I'm hearing, what are we doing? We're getting too cute, and I'm like, yo, we were complaining about you know, last year how we too don't, vanilla. We're too vanilla. Don't take enough chances. Now you have a mad genius in there. Um, so no, it's. Yeah, penalties bother me, but um, I, I think we're gonna be. I I think we're gonna be okay. By the way, front seven. Uh oh, Jane, you're a defensive lineman. I'm a little bit worried about Abdul Carter in the run game. Yeah, because he's not a true D end. However, uh, when it when Penn State's up, and he can just pin his ear ba ears back and go, oh Nelly. Yeah, because he just wreak havoc, and I think that's when those defensive ends really shine when they can just. Go. go um yeah. oh last thing i know this is i swear the last thing jay you gotta watch you gotta watch film on a guy by the name of zane durant good cowboy name is great cowboy name um listen you're a defensive lineman d tackle you yeah. would just absolutely love watching i'm telling you find clips of zane durant and this guy is going to be big time he's going to be he's absolutely amazing yeah. but we must move on the the game of the week by far lived up to the hype just absolutely crazy alabama beats georgia in tuscaloosa 41 34 a back and forth uh, jay we were talking before uh you know beaver stadium doesn't do a good job of keeping you informed of other games but um everyone walking out of the penn state game thought alabama was just trouncing georgia oh and they were but Georgia comes back, takes the lead, and then Alabama scores right back. It's like the classic left too much time for Bama and then left too much time for Georgia. Georgia starts to go down the march down the field and then a costly pick by Carson Beck. Carson Beck, 27 to 50 uh, for 439, uh, three touchdowns, but three picks that really killed him. Kalen DeBoer's. I think this is his big signature win for the Qu Crimson Tide. Jay, uh, your initial thoughts here? Yeah, so we did live stream this game for Apollo. Had a lot of fun watching it. Obviously, we picked a hell of a game to watch, uh, considering the back-and-forth nature. Or I guess it, I should say it was a fourth and then a quick back. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, this kind of played out in a way that I could have foreseen happening. Mm -hmm. Maybe not to the extent that it did, but... I did think that Alabama, with their ability to vertically stretch the field, could present a matchup issue for Georgia because I think that's one part where the Georgia defense has struggled at times is when teams can really stretch them vertically mm -hmm. create issues. Uh, Ryan Williams for Alabama, the 17-year-old wide receiver, incredible player. I mean, his 75-yard touchdown uh, to win the game or the game-winning score, uh, the go-ahead score for Alabama was incredible. Uh, the catch was incredible. The moves he made after the catch, the run down the sideline, dude is going to be a monster uh, for years to come. Uh, Carson Beck at times just wasn't seeing the field well. Uh, he did will them back into this game throwing the ball, uh, but there were just times where he just was was making some bad throws, uh, and those contributed to those three interceptions that he had. Uh, it's going to be. This Alabama team, I mean, we, we talked about it. Kalen DeBoer has won everywhere he's been. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. There was no reason to think that him going into Alabama with as much history as that program has, that it would be any different. And I think Alabama offensively is a juggernaut this year. Yep. I, I tell you what, Jay. Again, I, I only watch the condensed version of this game. Okay, so I only watch the condensed, like the 35 minute or um, did J- Jalen Milrow looked absolutely incredible. Yeah. Like he it, looked. He, you cannot play man coverage against Milrow. No. You can't right now. Because for, for two reasons right now. Um, one, he's beating you in the air, or at least he beat Georgia for a bit in the air where. Again, a little bit of separation. Your back is turned. And then, Jay, the on the other side of that, if you're playing man coverage and you don't have – your defensive ends don't keep him contained or you don't have a linebacker spying or your linebacker spying gets lost in the shuffle, he is beating them. And not only – like, he is going side to side. Yeah. He's outrunning dudes side to side, which I think is a lot different – than someone stepping up into the pocket and just taking what you can. Um, Jalen Milrow. Ooh. Jalen Milrow is my uh, my Heisman front runner right now. I, I think I have Ashton Genty as, as my I front mean, runner. But... Uh, yeah, he's in my top three. Yeah. Genty's in my top three, but I have I have Milrow. I don't right think you now. can be mad at Milrow being in in no. being your guy. And that was the knock. The knock was can he throw? Can he can he throw the football? And he just did it against Georgia. Yeah. So I, I think that is huge. We'll see how he again, uh, hopefully they do not um have the hangover game, which I don't think they will, just because of all the success that they've had and they've kind of instilled the the Nick Saban rat poison still in their minds. Yeah. Um, also, did you see the picture of Saban watching from the box? Yeah. <laughs> Almost like James Franco in Spider-Man three, like a very much of like they're doing it without me. Yeah. <laughs> type of thing. Like, no, I'm not saying that's what he was thinking, but it surely looked like that. Yeah. Like sting in the rafters. Yeah. That's ooh, uh, old school wrestling reference two for the day there but yeah go. um i don't know that that picture someone's got a splice saban and james james franco from spider-man 3 because he looked he looked mad that they were up 28 7 yeah i mean just a a classic alabama win for DeBoer, right like yep. going and, and getting it done and you know credit to georgia for never giving up too i don't, oh. I don't want to discount that either because uh, they did easily. fight and claw to get back in this game. I think Kirby Smart should be still proud of his guys. Just some things they got to clean up. Uh, mm-hmm. And I do think they made some good halftime adjustments to get them back in that game. So uh, Georgia is still going to be a problem for a lot of teams moving forward. Oh. I think we just realized that Alabama is still Alabama. Uh, yeah, Alabama is still Alabama. Um, listen, I, I thought they would be good this year. I did think they would drop two games. Um. But not this one. Um, no. We will see. The Tennessee they... matchup is going to be fun. I I I called my shot earlier in the year with that one. Um, yeah. It's going to be a sad day for me, but I will I'll also be right if it does happen. Um, so we got to talk about scores from other games here. Um, first off, uh, thoughts with the people in um, Western North Carolina. Uh, the Liberty App State game was canceled. I know people are getting ravished uh, there um, by the hurricane. So hope everybody, um, if we have North Carolina followers, um, hope everybody is doing well and staying safe. But yes, the Liberty App State game, which a uh, Jay highly anticipated anticipated football game, um, ends up being canceled. You know, r- rightfully so. Yeah. Um, a little bit of controversy in this one. Michigan gets the little brown jug or keeps the little brown jug uh, from Minnesota, 27-24. Of course, uh, the Big Ten, uh, you know, retroactive, never proactive in anything that they do, uh, has now made onside kicks reviewable to make sure that no one can be called offsides if they were called offsides wrongfully, Um, like Minnesota was. They get the onside kickback. Have a grand comeback, Jay. Yeah. Ball gets taken out of their hands. You know, this has happened before in Ann Arbor. I'm not saying there's a conspiracy, but it always seems like Michigan has always taken care of in in response to that. 
But yeah, uh, Michigan keeps the little brown jug. Yep. Uh, close game. Credit to Minnesota. This is another game that required a comeback, and the Gophers did not quit. Uh, they they got back in this one. So, uh, you know, obviously still some offensive concerns for Michigan. Uh, defensively, it's a good squad, but uh, this game was probably a little bit closer than it should have been because Minnesota just fought and clawed their way back into it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're going to stay in the Big Ten. The story of – is this the story of the Big Ten? Indiana beats Maryland 42-28. Indiana, the Hoosiers, are 5-0. and They are 5-0 and since the first time since the 50s. A long something? time, yeah. I think since like the first time since the 50s, the Hoosiers are 5-0. Um, I'm, I, I think I'm smoking. <laughs> I think I'm smoking the, the pack of Signetis. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm smoking the pack of Signetis. Uh, listen, I, I – boisterous – the the self-righteous confidence that he took this job and said look me up i've won everywhere and i'm gonna win here we're gonna compete for tight like and he's five and oh listen this can still crash and burn however 100 indiana again the enjoy it enjoy it while you can and i i think indiana fans have to just be absolutely just loving this right yep now. Who i don't is think they're rolling getting- yeah, they they're not getting they're not getting bogged down by anything. Hey, man, they're just they're just enjoying this ride. And I think they're like, I think we, I think they're, I think that they're thinking that we have our guy. This is our man. Like this is the guy that's gonna bring Indiana football um, to the promised land. <laughs> so, I, I I love it. Absolutely love it. Yep, uh, we got a we got a ranked Indiana football program now. I don't. Oh, they are ranked twenty fourth, right? Yeah, I think twenty three. Uh, twenty three, twenty four. Uh, and they have Northwestern winnable game. Uh, Nebraska, who mm. that's going to be tough. Yeah. Uh, Washington, we just saw lost to Rutgers, tough, but, but they do it. have Michigan and Ohio State back to back in November. So Oof. that's rough. That's, good. that's they rough. should they should handle Purdue though, who just fired Graham Harrell. Yeah, Purdue is not in a good way right now. Um, yeah, Purdue is, is is not a good football team right now. Not good for the Boilermakers. Jeff Brom left, and I think Purdue fans have realized, oh no, like this is how bad life can be. We, it's like Purdue at least had it okay, like you know, yeah. Um, but yeah, not great. Speaking of coaches that have, um. Or, or fan bases that are kind of like, do we have our guy? Uh, Manny Diaz, 21 and – or sorry, uh, Manny Diaz, 5-0 and at Duke. Yeah, big time 21-20 win 21 over, uh, gets, over North Carolina. Gets the gets the victory bell. Yeah. the vict- It gets the victory bell. Duke is t- – and, Jay, this is a team who we thought, hey, we, we, we were already kind of feeling bad, bad for Manny Diaz. Like, hey – this this isn't gonna this isn't gonna be good. You got to give him time. And man, he out the gate five and zero oh, against some scrap, just some scrappy wins. Um, n- nothing overly crazy, but they're winning all the 50-50 games. Yeah, and and things will get more challenging in the back half of the season. SMU is four and one. Yep. Uh, Miami. And then the NC State, who hasn't been great this year, but it's still going to be a tough challenge for the Blue Devils. Uh, <clears throat> but I think they, I mean, you, you got to win one of those last few games to get the bowl eligibility. Mm-hmm. You close the season with a Wake Forest team who is struggling in, in a similar way to Purdue, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, just lost to Louisiana. <clears throat> I think Duke's going to be bowl eligible in year one, which I did not see coming. Huge, huge for Manny Diaz. Um, Boston College escapes Western Kentucky, also 21 20. Um, Oklahoma beats Auburn 27 21. Jay, I took Auburn. I <laughs> I saw they were favored. I was like, ooh, this doesn't look right. I took Auburn. Um, I'm okay with Hugh Freeze losing, though. I'm, I'm perfectly fine with that. Um, so uh, Oklahoma. Beats Auburn 27-21. And Jay, how about this one, man? Sam Houston beats Texas State 40 to 39. 22 point comeback. Did you catch any of this one? 
I caught a little bit of piece of it. Uh, I was thinking about going to this one because this was played at NRG in mm-hmm. Houston. Uh, didn't end up making it, but man, uh, wild comeback for Sam Houston State. The Bearcats are four and one on the season after a disappointing jump to the mm-hmm. FBS ranks last year. Uh, they've rattled off three straight wins. Their one loss is to Central Florida, a Power 5 program. Right. Uh, this is a great year for the Bearcats so far, and obviously Texas State's going to be very disappointed, uh, but you still have a lot to play for if you're in San Marcos, uh, so you can't dwell on that because uh, because things don't get easier from here. Uh, you still have a lot of Sunbelt action to play, some good teams that you'll face. Uh, but, man, you have to be – ecstatic if you're in huntsville casey keeler obviously former delaware coach mm-hmm. uh led sam houston to a national title at the fcs ranks uh really good bounce back year for this program mm-hmm. yeah um we stay in texas smu 42 16 over florida state the poop curse continues yeah man. he and- still hasn't ate it and they lose again the poop curse is back on Florida State is one and four. If I, I don't know anyone that predicted that to start the season, no. Uh, and man, I mean, it's just the offense is so bad there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just did not see this coming. They get Clemson this week, so Tough. like not not a fun team to get. Uh, you know, Duke now is rolling. You still have Miami on the schedule. Notre Dame still on the schedule. You close the year at Florida, and that that could be a game where uh, Napier is gone by that time, and and mm-hmm. who knows what could happen there. But this is this is a tough, tough year for the Seminoles. Uh, after it was marketed as a revenge tour, and we we do it this. We've said it before, so I don't want to sound like a broken record, but this is the problem when you market. Or when you preach revenge tour, when you talk about every the, the entire season, this is what is because as soon as you have a hiccup, things can fall apart. Um, and you know, listen, uh, Matt Campbell used to get uh, flack all the time for we're just trying to win every week. We're trying to win every week. We're trying to win every week. And yeah, it sounds bad, but guess what? If you instill that culture, those guys are going to follow you. In. And I think. That's kind of what's happening with Florida State right now. I'm not saying those guys are giving up. It's got to be tough being in that locker room. But this is not good for the culture of Florida State. Mike Norvell, who looked like the home run hire last year, is now reduced to, is he going to make it another year? Yeah. Is the, can can he fix this? And, it, and this this, I don't know. I do not know. There's a lot of uncertainty in college football. Um, you know, one minute you're riding high and, and a couple bad decisions later and you are deep in, uh, ironically, filth. Yeah. In poop. Yes. In poop. <laughs> in, in poop, like this team. It, it's ironic, you know. Uh, no, you know what? Yeah, pun intended. I am intending the pun. Yes. So, yeah, I don't know what I don't know what Florida State's going to do. Don't know, but it, that schedule doesn't get easier. No, that's doesn't. tough. They, they, this team is not going to make a bowl. They're not no. going to go bowling. Um, now, Jay, to talk about something um, that I, I'm I'm sure people are going to want to hear about, maybe just to hear what we have to say about it. So, uh, UNLV rolls uh, Fresno, uh, fifty-nine to fourteen, uh, to. Uh, improved to four and oh by the way fresno uh, usually a pretty good program so unlv coming out very inspired and winning so this is what's happening if you're not uh familiar uh the quarterback and is it was it the starting running back or the backup so i think it was a backup running back starting quarterback starting quarterback so um the unlv quarterback sluka um he comes out and says he's using his red shirt ear because a- after you play three games or if you play four games, you you lose your red shirt. Um, uh, again, people who do not know that listening, a red shirt is a continuation of play. All right, you get an extra year if you have that red shirt. Um, so Sluka basically says, I'm transferring. I'm going into the transfer portal. 
um, because and says we, as in his representation, because again, we have agents, um, it, it basically saying that he was promised by an assistant coach. Uh, was it a hundred thousand? I think a hundred thousand. Uh, an NIL deal worth a hundred thousand dollars. And according to his father, he only got a 3000, which was basically relocation fees because he was coming from FCS Holy Cross. Yeah. So Jay, here is my take. Cause I do think it's a touchy subject. I don't think this is a black and white subject. And I think on this show, we, we do a pretty good job of not getting hyper, uh, high, high, using Hi- hyperbolic, hyperbolic, hyperbolic. Thank you. We, we try not. Yeah, there we go. We try not to be hyperbolic <laughs> on this show. Um, and yeah, we, we try not to deal in absolutes. But the thing is, this kid leaves FCS, Holy Cross, decent program, um, to go to UNLV, a rising program um, in the group of five. And they, if they promised him something and these the coaches aren't worried about it now, I, I – on one hand, I don't feel sorry. I, I don't feel bad for UNLV if they promised him something and they didn't deliver. Yeah. Now, on the other end of that, on the other end of that, if I'm another player on that team, of course I'm upset because I'm like, yo, like you just screwed over or potentially screwed over our entire season and left this hang out to dry. But again, if you're a player on that team, you're going to be mad at the quarterback, but should you be? Yeah. And I think that this is the thing. Who's lying? Is the player lying? Because according to UNLV or according to the uh, one of the representatives of UNLV, the representation of one of their coaches, I think his name was Reed. Uh, his last name was Reed. Which that's kind of a messy thing, too. Yeah, because uh, this guy is, as a reporter for 24-7 Sports, also representing a coach. Yep. A little bit messy. That is a little bit messy. Um, you know, totally, totally fine, right, Jay? Like, no one's going to find mm. that out. Yeah, yeah. No, the, the dots, the dots can't connect to that. Um, I don't know. It's So that's a little messy that he's basically saying that he wasn't promised anything and he was asking for more money. And since they were three and all, he thought he can get leverage. Yeah. So again, this is the dirty side of NIL and Jay, I don't know how you feel about this. Why don't we just bring contracts into this and transparency, transparency. Yeah. Say, and again, it, it can't be this easy. Like I, I I'm not the smartest man in the world. Okay, I have a Pennsylvania public school education. Uh, sorry, state school education. Okay, well, we won't talk about my master's degree right now. However, <laughs> however, this like to say we how do we say hey or how do coaches coaches and oh I also think there needs to be um, uh, general management too. Yeah. college football i think that will help big time which to be fair they have started kind of implementing yes. that right quote unquote but but yeah. why don't we say hey you're gonna have an nil deal with this car dealership okay and here it is sign the car dealership thing and then report it to the ncaa and yeah. say this is how much i am being paid and that way the NC who is a terrible, I know the NCAA is terrible. I think we both agree on there. Yeah. NCAA bad. But so are we, shady local businessmen sometimes though. So are shady <laughs> local businessmen. But it's to protect the play, one, the player to getting what he deserves because he gets it in writing. Or at two, least getting what's promised. Getting what's promised. And two, again, Jay, we love bowl games, right? Yeah. Contracts. You got to play in the bowl. And also it protects the school from things like this happening. If right. this is a scenario where UNLV thought one thing, but because NIL deals don't go directly through the school. They can't. They can't. Right. Something else happened. So. Right. And again, it the other thing is an assistant coach promised 
if Sluka Sluka can get UNLV in a lot of trouble. Yeah. Sluka can go to the NCA and say, this coach promised me this. Now, are they going to find anything? Probably not, because they're probably not going to be a paper. There's probably not going to be a paper trail. Yeah. Um, if there is, that coach is just super dumb. Um, if there's text messages or whatever. But if you have a contract, contract says this is what the, the kid's supposed to get. This is the bowl, you know, play he has to play in the bowl game. And if he leaves, he loses that money. Yeah. So now we fixed a couple things. We fixed guys transferring willy-nilly. We fixed players opting out of bowl games, and players are getting what they're promised. Yeah. And then let's be realistic too. Sluka's not an NFL guy. No. Like he's not. So I don't blame him for trying to get as much money as he can while he can. Yep. Very much so. No. Yeah. And Jay, uh, I'm with you there. And I think Sluka knows that. Yeah. I think Sluka knows I'm not an NFL dude. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to the NFL. So I want to make my money while I can. And if I came here, to make that money and it's not there, then I should save my eligibility and go yeah. somewhere that they're going to promise me well, shady things in Las. I, I know Jay, you're it's big famous. on the, I, I know you're big on the go, go offense. I think UNLV being good is fun too. Um, however, here's the other good news. UNLV did win and their team played very inspired football. So maybe this team's using a little bit of yeah. how's Malik Williams looked great. Yes. So here's the thing. UNLV players who are sticking it out. Good for you. Okay. I hope you win. Coaches who lie to students or uh, lie to athletes about money. Allegedly, to be allegedly, fair. Allegedly. Allegedly. Uh, screw you. And yeah, I hope the kid gets paid. Hope the kid, hope, I hope Suka gets his money. All right. I thought we did pretty well there. Yeah. I think we were. I think we were nuanced enough. I think we were. Yeah. A new one. What is nuance anyway? Come yeah. On. This is a pod. This is a college football podcast. What is nuance? All right. Uh, Jay, uh, the FCS minute. Yeah. So number seven, Central Arkansas took on number 25, Lamar, at the purple and silver turf in, in Central Arkansas. Uh, obviously, Lamar, I mean, you know, they lose 34 14, but still, what this program has done, I mean, it, uh, Lamar has just not been good for years. Uh, so for them to even be in the rankings was was a performance, a good performance for them. Uh, and, and honestly, I still think they have things to build off of uh, going forward. Uh, but this week we have a banger of a game between North Dakota and North Dakota State. In-state rivalry, number six, North Dakota, number two, North Dakota State. Both of these teams only have one loss. Both of those losses were to FBS programs. North Dakota lost 21-3 to to Iowa State. Not a bad loss to have considering Iowa State's ranked. Yeah. And then North Dakota State lost by one score to Colorado in the thriller. Uh, so this should be a very, very fun matchup. Looking forward to seeing this in the Missouri Valley Football Conference. Uh, tune in to FCS football. There's a lot of good football being played out there. Uh, next week, we'll have another FCS Minute game. And this time, I will be going to the game. Hell so, yeah. And to look forward to. Uh, for send Jay away, the Idaho Montana State matchup next week. Uh, but for this week, number six, North Dakota, number two, North Dakota State. Tune in. Love it, man. Absolutely love it. Big time game in the FCS. Now we move on to our preview uh, Texas State at Troy. Troy, this is on Thursday night, by the way. Troy is a 14 and a half point home dog. Uh, 57. Uh, and a half is the over under not sure about this one jay i think i'm leaning text uh, 14 and a half is a big number but i think i'm leaning for texas state definitely texas state to win not sure if i'm laying points though yeah troy troy's rebuilding a little bit uh you know tough tough uh to lose their coach uh summer all to tulane uh but you look at the games that they've lost this year and they haven't gotten blown out, right? Like you have a loss to Nevada, obviously not great, 28-26. You lose to Memphis. Memphis is a pretty dang good group of five team, 38-17. You lose by 17 to Iowa. That's not, you know, a bad loss no, there. Absolutely not. Uh, the most recent loss was to Louisiana Monroe. Yeah. In fairness, Louisiana Monroe is 3-1, and one, the one loss to – is to Texas, and they had that blowout win over UAB. So maybe Louisiana Monroe's good this year. I don't know. They hey, play James they, Madison, so we'll find general, out. General Booty. 
General yeah. Booty at the helm, man. They have James Madison this week, so we'll find out in that. So one. we will, we will. But see. I think fourteen and a half is just a few too many points for a Troy team that is kind of getting to desperation territory. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I worry about obviously Texas State with the uh, tough loss, you know, the tough comeback loss. One of two things: they're either going to come out angry, blow out Troy, or they go on the road to a place that's, you know. Troy has been the standard of the Sun Belt West for the past few years. True. I don't. I don't think we can forget about that. So, mm-hmm. I, I think I lean fourteen and a half Troy. Uh, mm-hmm. I think Texas State wins, but I do think this is going to be a close game. Okay. Uh, this is for our Texans who listen. Uh, Houston at TCU. Uh, uh, Jay, TCU, uh, 17 point favorites. Whoa, I know you Houston ain't that great, but 17 a lot for the frogs who have been kind of struggling a little bit to start off the year. Uh, 49 and a half is the over under. Again, I, I just this line is huge, and I, I, I don't feel comfortable I, again. TCU wins this football game, but I, I'm not comfortable laying down 17 points. I don't care who TCU is playing. Yeah, yeah, TCU just came off of a win over Kansas. Uh, Houston carried this game against Iowa State last week 3 nothing into the third quarter. Uh, <laughs> just a, a fun Big 12 high-scoring matchup like you expect uh, in the old Big 12. Uh, but, no, I mean, listen, I, I don't trust this game at all. No. Because uh, Houston, Houston had the cupboard left very bare. Uh, when when uh, Dana Holgerson was fired, which he a, usually does, which yeah, he does, yeah, he tends to do that. It's a big rebuild project for Willie Fritz. I do think Willie Fritz is going to get Houston right at some point, uh, and they played OU tough this year, right? Yeah. Like, so I don't know. I just think it's, I it's something that I would stay away from. This smells fishy. It does. It smell. It smells like I want to take Houston. It smells. Um, I think the under though is good. I like the under 49 and a half. That might be yeah. that might be the that might be the play. Um we're going to stay on Friday night Syracuse at UNLV. Uh UNLV the Rebels are four and a half point favorites 57 and a half uh over under. I think you would, again can UNLV get up again? And I I think they can. They had a big offensive performance against Fresno. I, I do think Syracuse is going to be a lot better than Fresno State. Um yeah, I, I I'm thinking Rebels here. I'm thinking Rebels too, but uh, credit to Syracuse for going on the road at a Group of Five program. We always yeah. appreciate seeing that. Yeah, and on again, Syracuse on uh, going across the country, maybe a little jet lag in yeah. Sin City. Come on, Friday yeah. night, weird things happen. Yeah, so I'm thinking, I'm thinking UNLV. I'm thinking UNLV there. Um, now we move on to Sunday, Jay. Um, I have to check this. I have to check this game because I have to see if it's still true on this line. Okay. Cause again, we, we, t- you talk about things that are fishy. Okay. You talk about things that are fishy. Um, and, and it's, it's your alma mater. That's what yeah. happened. This Mizzou at Texas A&M. Oh dear Lord. It jumped. Yep. <laughs> you got to take them. Oh man. AM is two and a half point favorites over ninth ranked Missouri. I'm doing it, Jay. I'm on it. You don't have to, Jay. Yeah, you don't I'm, have I'm to. I'm staying do away it. from this one. Uh, it's an 11 a.m. kick. Don't love that for a ranked versus ranked matchup. Kind of sucks. Uh, oh, oh, it does. Oh, wait. Oh, your big time matchups being at noon. Oh, well, that sucks. <laughs> oh, it sucks. Oh, really? <laughs> well, it's 11 a.m. You know, we're central time zone. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you got to see an 11 a.m. kick in, in College Station. It's still pretty it's good still environment. Fun. It's still fun. Yeah. Yeah. So, we'll, you know, kids will be there tailgating before the sun's up. Mm. Uh, should be a fun matchup. Uh, can A&M stop Luther Burden? That's a big question. I will say, I think the defensive line is going to give Brady Cook a lot of problems. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, Shamar Stewart and uh, Nick Scorton, Two very very good defensive ends. Mm. They they are going to create pressure. Can a And M run the ball against Mizzou? That's another question we'll have to answer. Uh, it's going to be a fun one. I, I'm excited to see this matchup in College Station because I do think this is a winnable game for a And I just don't know if 
they should be favored. A and M and take the under. That is my pick on the game. It's okay, Jay. You don't have to play this. I will play it for you. Aggies win in Aggie Land. Elko, big win for him in his first year. Would be massive. It would be huge. Um, next game, Iowa at Ohio State. Ohio State is a 20-point favorite, uh, 44 and a half. Ohio State hasn't really played anybody that great. Um, and here's the thing. I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disappointed in Iowa's defense. A little bit. A little bit. Their offense has taken a step forward. I know. That's the thing. And I still think their defense – listen, Iowa's defense is still good. Um, I just think – one, I don't know. I feel like that Iowa State game but left a bad taste in my mouth because uh, they uh, they let up a couple big plays, which are, is uncharacteristic for the Hawkeyes. I man, I'm not gonna bet this game because I, I think Iowa can muck this up. Yeah, I do. I think Iowa can muck this game up um, enough. But man, Ohio State just looks like an absolute juggernaut right now. But this again, first team they're going to play with a pulse. Yep. Uh, I'm thinking Iowa plus twenty. I just think it's too big, too big of a line. Oh, I'm, I'm kind of leaning there too. Two thirty uh, on CBS. Still, still adjusting to the Big Ten games on CBS. Yeah, yeah. Me, me, me too. Me too. Um, Auburn at Georgia. Georgia is a twenty-three and a half point favorite. Uh, 52 over under is at 52 and a half. Uh, I think you take Georgia with the points here. Yeah. I think they're just there. They're going to be, this is going to be prayers up for actually, you know what? It couldn't happen to it. It couldn't happen to a better guy. <laughs> it couldn't happen to a better guy. Uh, Hugh freeze is going to get pissed off Georgia. Uh, so yeah, I'm taking Georgia with the points. Yeah. The, the Auburn fans I know are not happy about Georgia coming off a loss in the deep South's oldest rivalry. Mm-hmm. Uh, great Great game name, by the way. Yep. Uh, Absolutely. Georgia rolls. I, I'm taking yeah. Georgia. And to, I mean, I would take them up to 30, honestly. Yeah. Uh, Auburn has looked bad this year. Uh, just offense struggled, and they're going against a Georgia defense that is still very good in spite of the points they gave up to Bama. Uh, I love the Bulldogs in this one. Yep. Uh, Ole Miss travels to Willie B. Uh, 51 and a half. Uh, is the over under? I like Ole Miss to cover. Uh, I think inspired football. They're going to get back to their roots. I I do. I like Ole Miss in this game. I don't care if it's in Willie B or not. Uh, again, um, yeah, I'm going to say it. It's it's an overrated place to watch a football game if it's or just a normal game. I think very I think very fair weather to me. But again, that's just me. Uh, I like Ole Miss minus nine. Listen, college football math doesn't make sense just because uh, South Carolina smoked Kentucky and Kentucky beat Ole Miss doesn't mean that how, that's how this game's going to play out, right? Like mm-hmm. you, you can't just use the transit of property. With that being said, South Carolina plus nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> I kind of like when we disagree. We're we're too much. We think too. Yeah, much. we we think too much alike. I do think so. I mean, listen, it's just going to be South Carolina's pass rush is really good. Yeah, they're, they're a really good pass rush unit. I think that's going to keep them in this game. Okay. Uh, Rutgers at Nebraska. Nebraska minus seven, uh, 43 and a half points sp- or uh, over under. Um, I like Nebraska minus seven. I, I think, listen, Rutgers, you had a, you had a great start and you're going to have a good year, but you're riding high off that Washington win. I think this is the perfect letdown game in Lincoln. Uh, I like Nebraska minus seven. I like the under uh, 43 and a half. I think this is going to be a very low scoring game in Lincoln. Uh, Nebraska struggled to put up points against Purdue. We had the noop going on there for a while there. Uh, (laughs) Zero, zero with the Nebraska and the Purdue logos there on the edges. Noop. Uh, But I'm going to, I'm going to go with the under at 43 and a half here. I think that's a lot of points for these two teams to score. I like that. I like that. My, my only my only concern with that, Jay, is if Rutgers really struggles to move the football. Oh, but then again, if Rutgers isn't moving anything, oh yeah, I don't know. The more, <laughs> I, yeah, I don't know. I might have talked you into it because now, like, I'm thinking, like, well, what if Nebraska scores like 31? I'm like, oh wait, then what if Rutgers doesn't score any or only scores 10? Um, 
Mm. You might have talked me into the under, too. Yeah. Can talk I talk you into another under? Yes, you can. Michigan at Washington, 41 and a half. Both of these offenses have struggled mightily this year. Uh, Washington's maybe a little bit more surprising because we saw how much Michigan lost. Uh, this is going to be a low-scoring game uh, on the shores of Lake Washington in the greatest setting in college football. Uh, a little bit of a disappointing game for both of these teams uh, compared to what it could have been. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a rematch of the national championship, right? Like, yeah. Uh, and we're not even like considering that part of the game just because. No. Both of these teams felt like they've fallen they, off so hard. I'm taking the under 41 and a half. They look they're they're completely different teams. Yeah. And not only that, Michigan's ranked 10th, and they are two and a half point dogs in this game. Uh, again, uh, what's what's going on? Oh, oh no, it smells. Jay is wafting his nose. It smells. Um uh, yeah, I think I'm taking Huskies and I'm taking the under. Yeah. I think I'm taking Huskies and the under in this one. Um, a Florida showdown, UCF at Florida, Florida, a one point favorite 59 and a half is the over under. I like UCF on the road after that loss to Colorado. I think inspired football is going to happen. I like UCF on the road. Uh, yeah. And, and Gus Malzahn is going to have some tricks up his sleeve. Uh, this is the end of the Billy Napier era at Florida. Uh, when central Florida comes away with a win, it's over calling, calling the shot. Oh, he's going to be the first head coach gone. I think so. There we go. Um, And here's the other thing, Jay, that I don't think – I think we mentioned this earlier on. UCF is going to be way more motivated than Florida is. 100%. Because Central Florida is going to come out with something to prove. They're going to come out with something to prove of we're sick of being the redheaded stepchild of this state. Like, we deserve respect. We're power five now. We're beating people, and we beat you in the Gasparilla Bowl already, okay? Give us some damn respect, and I think Central Florida does that with crazy Gus Malzahn and his sweater vests uh, across (laughs) there in the swamp. Give me Central Florida. The college game day, the game of the week, Miami at Cal. Some have taken to calling this Coke versus Woke on the Twitterverse. (laughs) Yes. I love uh, it. Uh, oh, Cal Twitter has just been incredible this year. It's been so great. It's so been funny. so great. They've had that. They had that bad loss against Florida State, which we will forgive them for. Um, but I, I don't know. I like Cal plus twelve because big game. Miami is still licking their chops against Virginia Tech last week, and I think Cal keeps this game close and. Jay, remember, Justin Wilcox can call a defense. Yeah. Okay, this team, this defense is going to be ready. Cal's defense is going to be ready. I might also kind of like, I might like the under. I'm, I'm not sure yet. But Miami's, def, Miami's, Miami's defense, I should say, did not impress me against Virginia Tech. No. Cal might be able to move the ball around a little bit. But no, I like Cal plus 12. Yeah, I like Cal. Plus twelve too. Uh, the fact that they have now embraced the memeing oh, yeah. uh, makes me think that like people are actually going to show up uh, for yeah. this game. Should be a fun environment with game day being there. Uh, I like Cal plus twelve too. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then lastly, at eleven o'clock on Fox, Texas Tech at Arizona. Uh, Arizona minus four and a half point favorites at home. Uh, I think. Listen, you're going to be up watching this. If you're up watching this, take the over. Yeah. 62 and a half. We're going to hammer the over here and we're going to have a hell of a time watching this game at 11 o'clock at night. The border conference is back. A yes. uh, little, little old school border conference matchup between Texas tech and Arizona Tucson. Great vibe stadium. I talk about this every yes. once in a while, Absolutely. really cool little area. Uh, I, I want to go see a game out there. Bad. Somebody, somebody from, from Arizona fly me out sometime. Just, just for a treat. Uh, but, yeah, I'm taking the over in this one, too. 62 and a half. Fafita, McMillan, they're going to score a lot. Uh, Morton, uh, Taj uh, from, from Texas Tech. It's mm-hmm. a fun offense there. I like the over in this one, 62 and a half. Bingo. Absolutely love it. And, uh, Jay, it's now time. Let's, let's land the plane. Let's land that plane. Folks, help us grow as a podcast by doing all the things that help us get our name out there. Share it. 
like it, subscribe it, rate it five stars, do all those things that help us grow. You've been monitoring the Sin Away fundraiser. We have raised over eleven thousand dollars for food banks around the country. Uh, by the time this episode is released, the fundraiser will be over. But I just want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart for contributing to such a good cause. Uh, and thank y'all for listening. We appreciate you. We wouldn't be able to do this without y'all. Let's have some fun watching some college football. Let's have a damn Saturday. Have a great week, everybody.